Hello, this is Paul the Okanite, bringing you the continuation and hopefully the conclusion of our short campaign of Normandy 44, picking up with turn five with the German player turn. Charlie has had his dinner and he's now having his after dinner nap, so uh, we can go ahead and begin turn five with the all important weather roll. I rolled a one, which is, would it be a storm, but by the scenario rule, the optional rule that we're using, we throw that away and we roll again. Five. Okay, we have nice clear weather. Which means the following, what does that mean? Okay. Oh, uh, we see the Germans, this is turn five. Yes, they may build that, that uh, improved position this time. So we're gonna set that aside. They got one supply point. We'll put that in the seventh army. They get one of those zero quality replacement points they have to use immediately. The US gets infantry and armor replacements. So let's see, move the, the counters here, infantry and armor. They now have three armor replacements. Maybe we'll start rebuilding some of those little armors that were damaged uh, in the invasion. British get one replacement infantry. They can always use replacement infantry. Poor Canadians haven't gotten anything yet in this game. Uh, we have three uh, air units, so we have a full allotment of air units and naval units. So let me do that. And naval. And we, for supplies, the British are up to three. They haven't been using them. The Americans are desperately using those in an attempt to bring their two beachheads together. And that is the thorn in the side right there. And that area continues to get stronger. So this is now turning in from a unfor couple unfortunate die rolls to a problem to a big problem. We'll see what happens. All right, so we did... Uh, the weather and all those good things. If we do, we have any? Oh, there's a headquarters that needs to be flipped from its moving side. We did that. I think we're up to the German uh, uh, replacements, and so I'll see what we got to use that one. I'll see. All right, we're going to go with the unit from the 352nd, which is kind of in this middle area here. We have a headquarters suitably placed. Going to put his regroup on there while he's getting himself pulled together for the turn and so the replacement has been used. Ah, uh, let's see, we now have the movement phase for the Germans. Let me go ahead and see what we can do and uh, what kind of attacks, if any, I, I kind of doubt it, but if any, uh, that they're going to do. So the German move is done and uh, basically I've decided there's no going to attack, no attacking going to happen because Basically, the Germans are kind of happy with what's going on. Uh, if, say, if I were these guys, I would not see any reason to inflict more casualties upon myself to take hexes that I really don't need. So right here, the game is right here right now, I think. Uh, and just to make matters worse, the Germans have, are starting to uh, use their improved positions at this point to make this even nastier. So we've started digging in over here. And uh, next turn, if we are able to, According to the weather chart, we're going to start digging in over here. Uh, this could get really tough, and uh, they only have to survive through turn seven. So this is turn five. Uh, I think they're saying, "Do your do your best, guys." You know, when you really had a chance, you didn't do anything. So now we're really going to make it tough on you. And it is the Allied turn. Uh, let's see, we're going to do allied replacements and bring guys on shore and all that stuff. And then we're going to do their moves. So let's see how this works. Taking a look after the allied units move, we've continued to bring in uh, new units. Another uh, part of an infantry division. We started the second armor, which is a nice unit. And uh, second armor is a good unit to have especially if we manage to break through here. And the same going on over here with the British. They've completed bringing in their 7th Armor. They're bringing in another infantry division. Uh, some attacks going up and down the line, which, of course, the two main ones are happening right there. The Allies are struggling to get any kind of odds over here. But uh, they've had some bad dice. Now they need 
They need some good dice. All right. Uh, let's start with the four to one far to the left and uh, see where it takes us. Five. Good roll. D1. Okay. He takes his hit. He's going to go back in the bocage. Advances. Nope. We would break up our Zoc bonds. We don't want to do that. Well, we could do it with the, uh, the guys in the south there. Would that do anything good for us? You know, in the scope of this scenario, I'm not worried about driving across the peninsula. That's not something that's going to happen. But I tell you what, okay, let's advance here. Putting some pressure, he's going to have some trouble maintaining Zakbans over here without some additional help. He's a little bit short of armor right now, so uh, there's nothing more that... Uh, so we're hitting him where we, we still have some squishy parts where he doesn't have good armor, and, uh, good infantry, and a junk unit all stacked together. Here's an important one, three to one. Trying to break through. The guys on the left, three is the, oh, geez, they rolled a one. A1, DR, forget it, little boy, go home. Well, defend a retreat. I take that back. So they take a hit. I, ma I, I made it so that the infantry division was the lead unit. So they actually are, they could take the place after all going to be A1, DR. So let me remove this. And they're going to try for a determined defense once again and see if they can override their retreats. All right, as before, we, we still have a plus one infantry. We're going to use what's left of him. Uh, we are in, let's see, that's mixed terrain in a town. Uh, that's other, so it's a 5-6. We're going to get a plus one for the infantry, not for the armor. Uh, and yes, sir, we are going to pump in more artillery. The artillery is what's keeping us going here. As before, a one or a two means they, uh, the allies take the hex. Anything else is going to, uh, is going to uh, keep the hex at a cost to somebody. So, okay, we're on the other. We're at plus two on the roll. Two. Goes to a four, and the allies kick them out. How about that? So they stop the entrenchment from happening, and they kick them out. They're going to go back. Well, they're going to go back one into the bocage, or hmm, the mechanized unit. That's that's these are mechanized. They can't go into the flooded hex. Uh, if we go this way, we have to go back two, or we can go back one this way, or some split. But man, this might have been what the Allies needed. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have to go here just to keep uh, some kind of presence in that area in the middle, where we're trying to squeeze the Germans out. Uh, we're gonna throw these guys across the river and throw the tank over there. Actually, we can go two, right? Right. I'm not worried about any counterattacks. I'm just not. No. Go there. Go there. In theory, I'm opening up things a little bit, but under these circumstances, uh, I still have Zox. If the uh, Germans go forward, I can easily reestablish Zox bonds because this is put, putting us in a much better situation. We're not fighting across this darn river. Uh, I don't see any advantage for the Germans to go there. They're not going to threaten the beachhead at this point. Too many guys. Too many guys are coming. All right, well, that's a, that's a W column for the, uh, for the Americans. Let's see if they can follow through. This is two to one here. Two, not great. A1, DR. So this is expensive. Same as the other result. A1, taking it on the 29th. We're, we're rebuilding it, and they're getting new casualties. It's over there. Uh, defender retreat, yes, hmm, well, that would be giving up on this. 
course, you could argue that, uh, that this is already folding. This is already folding because now the back door is open. We got the 101st there ready to hit them from behind. And they would be kind of surrounded under those circumstances. Any, you know, man. And the worst of it is I don't think there's enough over here to uh, counterattack with necessarily. We need, we would need to clear out these paratroopers. Tell you what, I'm going to defer that decision. I'm going to say, yes, we're going to do a determined defense and see what we can do here. All right. So we've got a plus one quality unit. We're using up a lot of artillery, but that's okay. Actually, I can take it from Cherbourg because everything's linked. So I will take it from the Cherbourg headquarters. And so we're going to get plus two. It is in other. It's the same as before. One or two, and they retreat. Anything else, and they don't, and something else happens. Six. Oh, boy. Uh, well, that is an additional casualty to the Allies. It's a casualty to the Allies. Oops, what am I looking there for? What am I looking there for? I have to recalculate that. Uh, additional casualty to the Allies. Well, the unlucky 29th takes another one. And that's it. They don't retreat. So the Allies took two hits there. The Germans, nada. All right. And it looks like I had intended this one, but I took the die off. Six. Oh, that's got 18 points. It's got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 to 1 with infantry superiority. That's 3 to 1 and an airplane. 4 to 1 out of boat range and we're saving. We don't have any more ammo for the artillery. So that was a 4 to 1. Let's take it. Roll to 1. Exchange. So we pick each other's poison. In a sense, allies like exchanges because it lets us get at the good stuff. So yeah, we like that minus one infantry here. We're gonna put, we're gonna tag this 88. Uh, these 88s cannot be replaced either. You cannot build them up again. So whenever you put a hit on them, it's hit forever. And you keep chewing up infantry. The allies, allies have so many tanks, I don't know, but uh, I think uh, we have a lot of understrength infantry that works to our advantage too. Okay, next, uh, we've got a four to one on these guys with all kind of support thrown in. Three, defender retreat, no other losses. <sighs> okay, back one. Of course, we will be giving up a town, and I think that will count for victory. I'll have to look. But generally speaking, you want to take towns that are offered. It's always a good thing for victory. Problem is, we already have an understrength infantry here. I don't want to lose any more. All right. So, he's going to advance into the town. He's going to advance. Actually, here, let's advance everybody into the town. That's the only place that matters. We have happy Zakbans. No problems. And here's three to one. Trying to start a, start working on the outskirts of Khan, see if we can make a little headway. Three to one. And spinning, and it's a six. D1. So, the defenders definitely take a hit. And... They will probably roll to see, try to see if they can stay here. You don't want to give up these hexes so easily. So uh, they're on defense, so they get to choose. They, so we're gonna we're gonna we got this really crappy crappiest of the crap unit. He is gonna take the hit. On defense, you can give it to anybody. On offense, you have to, if you've got a, a bonus from somebody, like a shift from armor or a shift from quality, those guys have to take the hit. But on defense, anybody. 
Okay. Uh, so then now we got to see if we want to stay here. Yes, we do. This is a town, not a city. The city hexes have this kind of bluish by it. These are not. These are the suburbs. So uh, we're going to look. Uh, it's going to be the other. Five or six is good. The lead unit is going to be the infantry. It's got an advantage. That's going to be a plus one. We've got to start. Mm -hmm. All right, you talked me into it. We'll throw artillery in. We, we only have two in our stockpile. Uh, so let's see. Improved position. It's going to be plus, excuse me, other plus two. Same deal. Don't roll a one or a two. Anything else does something, but they stay. One. There you go. Adios. Adios, muchachos. And let's see. The city stops the retreat. Certain terrain, as well as if you have more, uh, you have at least as many uh, uh, points of uh, units you're falling back into, that will stop a retreat also. Unless it's a four hex retreat, in which case that's a route and nothing stops it. And we move in. And we move in. Remember, you don't have to go into the hex that you, can't, that, that you, uh, you attacked. You can go anywhere. So actually, man, oh man, so they actually captured a city, a, a city hex in kind of the Germans may want to start reacting to this. This is getting out of hand. Okay. But that is the end of turn five. Uh, you got to do some cleanup, take a look at the overall situation. So the, the, the Americans are making headway they're getting some they're driving across the peninsula a little bit even though that's not their focus right now they did make significant project progress right there most excellent for them uh this this was an abysmal failure but now we've got uh, we're going to have some uh, some friends coming to apply more pressure so we're not out of the woods yet but mm, it's uh it's it's a fight. <laughs> it's a fight. Let's leave it there. Uh, and then uh, getting some progress in Khan was very nice. Uh, the Germans may have to uh, muster some strength and try to deal with this. Give a little pushback. Okay. All right. Uh, that is turn five. And then we're going we're gonna, to uh, start up with turn six. And now we are on to turn six. Although one point of correction, I had forgotten to bring in the German reinforcements for the turn Turn five, so we have some guys here. Small but good quality uh, motorized infantry. And a good, we have a Panther tank from Panzer Lair. I think that's getting towards the end of Panzer Lair coming on. And a naval verifer. So in theory, we can take two shots with artillery. Okay. Uh, so let us go ahead and uh, let us go ahead and do the weather roll for turn six. A one. That would be a storm. Now, see, we had a one last turn, a one this turn. It would be game over. <laughs> okay, in a in a short game like this, you just can't let the let the storms rule the result like that. And in the in the larger game, in the full campaign, I, as I said, I think it has too much influence. That's why they have the optional rule. I suggest you use it. Okay, so we reroll. Can we get something other than that? We got a three. All right, we're back to overcast. It is the lighter form of overcast. And so, uh, let's see, we have two German improved positions. The first one was aborted because we took the hex. Now we're going to be trying in two places. Uh, they get two supply points, so the Germans do best when the weather's bad. Two supply points. We've been burning lots of ammo, so that's a welcome thing. Uh, one infantry replacement, no armor. We've been getting uh, a lot of infantry. Our armor is still not hurt, so we do need the infantry. That's a good thing. Uh, looks like one American infantry, no armor. So one American infantry. They're doing okay on replacements, but they're also getting a lot of losses. Uh, let's see. One British infantry, they very much need that. The Canadians want some, but they still haven't gotten any. 
Uh, to do that, we need to roll a six. Uh, let's see. Going across, we're only going to have one air unit. That's going to be painful. One out for one British, one American. And we do get the boats, but they're getting close to being irrelevant. Except for where we really need to make some progress, which is here. This is about the only place that the boats are in range. All right, so we did that. Uh, let's see, any moved headquarters? They should be flipped to their unmoved side. I don't see any right now. We're good. Uh, German replacements. Okay, I'm going to figure out what we want to do with German replacements, and we continue on. Okay, I'm going to take a replacement for a, a plus one quality infantry here. Uh, I'd rather move up a hex because I could move here. Actually, I think they can they move up one? Let's see. One hex movement. Okay, so we're going to move them up. That's good because then we're going to reform the line here. Uh, beyond that, I think we have this Panther. Now, it is a four quality armor. The Americans don't have any of those. And so uh, that will automatically give us armor superiority, okay? The downside is that they are semi-unreplaceable. And by that, I mean uh, only, replace, only armor replacements, ta replacements taken during a storm turn can be used to re put replacements into a four-quality German armor unit. So we know that uh, by the with the option we're using, there will only be, that will only happen on turns 14, 15, and 16. So for our purposes, any hits on this guy are going to be there for the rest of the scenario. Uh, but still, you know, I guess you can't afford getting into a grind fest at con. And I've, I'm going to I I just feel the need to push back on that last turn, and to do that having a a four. Uh, armored valued tank to do it with is a good healthy start okay so I'm going to do the move I'm going to see what I can do to set something up over here to start doing some pushback and over here my goodness uh, you know in the full campaign I think I would be pulling out because he could be easily be put out of supply at this point the back door has collapsed as far as he's concerned and I think he still can get out of there, but if he stays, the Allies have two turns to crush him, and I think they, they might, like, really crush him. Uh, I'm going to think on that one a little bit, too. So, yes, this would be a, a turn, where the turn where the Germans are fur furrowing their brows instead of just getting their, their lines nicely, nicely dressed. So, all right, let me see what I do. So the Germans have done with their move. They've managed to uh, continue to put up a solid line. Uh, uh, let's see, we've decided we've out. The Germans have managed to put up a solid line and we're continuing to hold here, uh, however ill-advised that may be. Uh, there's only two turns left in the scenario, so we're just going to tough it out. Uh, going down the line, there's still a couple squishy hexes, but it is filling in over here. We are attacking uh, with base. We have one-to-one -one odds, but we have artillery. We have armor superiority with the Panther tank, and we have infantry quality superiority. So we have, we have a plus three. We have three positive shifts, so that's going to make it a four-to-one attack. Uh, I also took a quick look at victory, okay, and uh, it takes 14 points for an allied win. Three of them are, co are completing the road network from Juno Beach to St. Mariglise, which is right there. Uh, that's three points. They get two points for Bayou. They get two points for any uh, additional city they own that are beyond the range of naval gunfire. That would be con, and that would be that. This, count, this would count for two points. If they manage to hang on to it, that's why we have to try to take it back. They get one point for every airborne landing zone that they control, and they control all but this one. So I predict some action over there. Uh, as well as any uh, two points for any city beyond the, the bombardment range of the guns. I mentioned that. One point for any town beyond the range of bombardment of guns. So this town we just took this last move, that's a victory point. 
And looking around, the, the, well, that one is, no, that's uh, that's within the naval gunfire range. That wouldn't count. But this one would count. That one would count. So, you know, it's possible if we do well enough in other places, we don't absolutely have to complete that road network. It just kind of makes it whole lot easier. When I counted up the points, if the game ended last turn, the Allies were one point short. Okay, so it's not that bad. It's a very competitive game right now. But I would say the Germans just want to fight tooth and nail to, uh, to keep this road network closed. Uh, if they are, obviously, if they're sitting on it, if it's in their zone of control, or if it's in their area of control, they control it. If it's in their zone of control, they control it. If it's in the zone of control of a unit, they control it, except that that zone of control may be negated for this purpose by having a, an allied unit out there. So it's kind of tenuous to rely on zones of control to cut this road, especially with the allies having the last move. All right. Um... So, with all that said, we have a 4 to 1. We're going to take it. There's a German attack at 4 to 1. Let's see what we do. A 1. Oh, exchange. Jolly for the Germans. That's just what, what they wanted. So, with the exchange, each side chooses each other's casualty. And clearly, this far less replaceable Panther is first on the list to take a hit. Yes, yeah, this is what we get for trying something, right? And then let's get rid. Well, you know, this common water, this uh, Canadian infantry is tough to find replacements for. It is. Uh, I'd be tempted. In fact, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the casualty on the Canadian infantry. They just don't get that many replacements. Uh, be attempting to kill off the tank, but you know, he could come back with armored replacements. It's not a permanent thing, and there's lots of tanks. Uh, okay, that's the German attack. Such as it is, there's no further reserve movement or attacks. Uh, I can clean up uh, markers if there are, if there are any, and, uh, and then uh, see there's nobody out of supply that I see. Uh, although that may change with the guys over over. Uh, here. These guys could end up having their supplies cut if they're not careful. All right, we're on to the allied player turn, beginning with the replacements and, uh, and bringing in the reinforcements. And uh, as a result of our movement, uh, we are taking a four to one up here with the help of some artillery from naval bombardment, which we still are in range of. Uh, let's see, and over here where we really are paying a lot of attention, uh, the lead elements of the 2nd Armored Division were able to get us back up to one-to-one -one on this attack, and then we just threw in everything but the kitchen sink uh, to get it up to four-to-one with planes and, and, and boats and artillery. Uh, over here, uh, that's still kind of a squishy hex, so we're going to take a shot at it at four-to-one. And then down here, we're going to, the, the British 6 Para, with some help, is going to take a shot at these guys uh, and see what is what we can do. I have a feeling we're going to be able to take, we will be able to take that drop zone back here. Uh, so let's start with one that doesn't matter quite so much. This is a little cleanup. It, it, it might put us in a little bit better position to make a play on that town, which would be a victory point if we can manage to uh, get it. You'd have to win a combat next turn, but it's possible. Four to one here with a one. We're back doing exchanges again, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't hurt the Allies so much because they, they, they are getting a steady stream of replacements. Uh, this was done with the not with the Paris, the lead, the lead uh, unit was the, uh, uh, the main attack force was the 4th Infantry Division, so they are going to take the hit. And then this guy takes the hit, and that's it, no retreats. I have a feeling he'll be retreating next turn, though. <laughs> uh, over here, 4 to 1, important one. Let's see what we can do. It's a six. All right. D1. So defender's going to take a hit and retreat. And of course, he's going to contest that. Uh, 
taking on the zero point infantry. Zero quality infantry goes away. They do that a lot. And yes, of course, we're going to contest this. One word about supply. Uh, according to the supply rules, you can actually trace through one zone of control as long as you don't, control, you don't trace through two consecutive zones of control, you can trace supply. So the Germans actually can, unlike just about any other game I've ever seen, go right through the zone of control. This one does not have a zone of control. They're good to go for supply. So they can maintain themselves. If this status quo stays here, they can maintain themselves indefinitely uh, without worrying about supply causing them a problem. Uh, all right, so the main unit is going to be that big, fat Panzer Lair. Panzer Grenadier unit. Uh, we are in. We are in the. Uh, uh, we are in the town. Oh, one thing I forgot. I did have two uh, improved positions. That doesn't make any difference now. But if the it it will flip over and be there for the Allied turn if they don't win this. So that makes it harder to kick them out. So eh, we'll see. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, where do we want the second one? Because we have two of them. Uh, you know, just for grins, I just stick it over here. And we're going to try to keep, uh, uh, entrenching in over there. All right. Well, let's see, we hit, we still are on the other table. It's a five or six shot. Uh, the, uh, the Panzer Grenadiers are plus one quality, so they're going to add one to the roll. And, oh yeah. We're going to be pumping another artillery shot, so we're back again. One or two, they retreat. Anything else, something happens, but they don't retreat. Six. Well, that's going to be another hit on the Allies. Going to be a hit. Put it on the unfortunate 29th. We have... Uh, this is the remainder of the second armor. They will be able to... Uh, be in on this next time, but that entrenchment will be complete by the time they do. Uh, lucky them. Okay, that's it. And next is going to be on these guys a four, six, D1. They take a hit. Ooh. Well, it's going to be on the crud infantry instead of the irreplaceable. 88s and they got to leave go back one in the bocage and let's just send him there send him there send the tank there I do not think there's going to be anybody molesting us okay so we've advanced uh, oh, yippee, we, we got a hex. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Bocage. <laughs> Over here, uh, we got five to one. Four. That might do something. Five to one, four. D1. All right. Defender's going to take a hit. We're getting some attritions on the Germans this turn. Some attrition on the Germans. D1. Oh, how about this Cruddy Ost Battalion? Adios, Cruddy Ost Battalion. All right. Now what? Well, it's a DR. We can try to stay there. It'll be other. It'll be, it's, we know the drill. Uh, yeah, we're going to try. So it's going to be plus, we're going to have the lead unit being that plus one infantry. It is in other. It is, yes, it's in mixed terrain. So it's other. And do we want to pump more artillery in? We have three points left. And one turn after this. Yep, we're going to pump. So it's going to be plus two uh, on other. So one or two, he leaves. Anything else? Something bad. Something happens, but he stays. One, he leaves. So he is going to have to, well, he can go back one into the town. 
the town stops him, city stops him. Uh, but the whole objective here was actually to, uh, to take that landing zone. Question is, do I want to, yeah, I'm going to bring the tank. The, uh, improved position goes away because we abandoned it. And now, if the Germans want it, they're going to have to t attack to get it back again. Oh, uh, lucky them. Okay. Uh, that is the attacks for the Allied turn. Uh, I'll do the clean -em up phase. We'll get ready for the seventh and final turn. Uh, we can count points just for grins. Uh, so we now have all nine of the drop zones. That's nine. That's 11. That's 12. Uh... 9, 11, 12, I, oh, 14. Uh, if, the, if the game ended right now, it would be an allied victory uh, because we still have that, that conhex. We need, the, if we lose, we can't, we got to have a conhex if we don't establish this, uh, if we don't link these, uh, these beachheads. So if it ended right now, the Allies would actually win. Okay, we got one turn to go. Clearly, the Germans need to do something. All right, let me get ready for the seventh and final turn. All right, we're up to turn seven. The Germans need to do something to, uh, to get some points back, or they are toast. Uh, last turn of the game, and here is the all-important weather roll. A one. So that would have been three storm terms we would have had this game. So if I have, if if my if my theoric, theoretic examination of weather rules didn't persuade you uh, in the at the beginning when I was just setting up, uh, this should this should uh, should persuade you that you absolutely positively have to use the optional rule for weather. Otherwise. Everything can be just, you know, why don't you just roll, roll, roll the weather rolls for, for 22 turns and have the victor condition is no more than five storms. If you roll more than five storms, the Germans win, less the Allies win, and that's your game. Okay, let's not do that. So let's use that rule. We're going to re-roll this and see what it is. A two. Crappy weather. Crappy weather. Okay. So this is not what the Allies wanted to see. Uh, the, it's overcast too. Uh, the Germans get two more improved positions. So we're going to get those. Actually, they won't be done yet. It doesn't matter. This is the last turn of the game. It takes two turns to build them. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, two supply points. Oh, yeah. We want that because we're using them to maintain our position. We would have been kicked out of the out of uh, 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 out of there long ago if it wasn't for the artillery points. Uh, we have one armor replacement. How about that? Eh, we had one in the bank already. Here's another one. We haven't been taking the hits on the tanks. The Americans get one infantry. Uh, the British get one infantry. And no air power. That's nasty. That's going to really limit what the Allies can do. They have their navy, which is not going to be useful in too many places. But it is what it is. All right. Well, the Germans actually have a chance here. Uh, let's see what the deal is. All right. Well, they certainly can't give up any more ground. But I think without the air cover, this is, you know, making further progress is going to be tough without air power. Uh, that is in play. Oh, oh one other thing. <laughs> the mulberries finished construction. Okay. What that means, instead of getting one, uh, one artillery supply point per turn, the Americans and the British get two each. They were getting one each. So that might be enough to make a difference because we can, we can pound with more artillery to make up for the lack of air power. Uh, so, okay. Um, Germans, 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 Germans. They have, are they going to take any replacements? Uh, what do they have? They, they have whatever they want. Okay. Cannot replace the, the, the uh, Panthers, though. Again, that can only be done with armor points taken on a storm turn. And you can't store them up. You got to use them right away. 
uh, in order to, you can storm up, but then you can no longer rebuild the panther. You have to use it right away. Okay, I'm going to look through here, see if anything needs rebuilding. I'm going to go ahead and take care of the move if there's any attacking. And there kind of has to be, uh, and they kind of have to win it, or it's kind of over. <laughs> so let me see what we can do. Alrighty, the Germans are done with their move. And we, again, we just kind of hemmed them in more, bringing up reinforcements, adjusting the line, strengthening the line, doing what we can. Still a very squishy spot right here. Eventually, if this keeps on holding and holding, the Allies are going to push and flank the thing. Uh, and then they will have to go. They'll go one way or the other. But right now, right now, uh, because we have this flooded terrain, it's hard to get two hexes to attack that thing and to get an 18-point uh, combat power. Uh, and what's in there's good. It's in. It's good. It's got artillery support. It's high quality stuff. It's putting up a good fight. Uh, here we're going to hit this again. Uh, we're going to hit it again to try to take that hex back. Uh, if we don't do it, it's over. The Allies will win. Okay. So we have a four to one. We have a four to one. And that's because we have infantry superiority. We're throwing in that the wounded panther is going in for a second go at it. Uh, so that's another shift. We got artillery. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. So we got four to one. And having fun. Let's see what, I do, what we do. Four. A1, D1. Both sides take hits. Uh, A1, D1. I believe they get to choose their own poison. As opposed to choose the other guy's poison. So, yes. Cut must come from the math. So it's either got to be the infantry or the armor. Clearly, we're going to put it on the infantry. Uh, over here. Well, we have two wounded Canadians. Eh, poor wounded Canadians. That division is going to have to be withdrawn soon. All right, we're going to we're going to put this guy in a cadre. Someday we'll roll a six and get a replacement to bring him back. Uh, we sure rolled a lot of ones, even though we we didn't count them. The one good thing about a one also is that it brings in count. You have the option of bringing either a a British infantry or a Commonwealth infantry reinforcement, and that would have, would have let you rebuild Canadians. But the way we're playing it, you got to, there's only one way to do it, and that's when you roll a six. Well, they're, they're, they're getting, they have, we have guys to replace them with, and we are, we are not in a problem here. All right, clearly we are going to, uh, we are going to put up a, rogue, a tough defense here, a determined defense. We are in a city. And that gets us on a good column. Uh, we are... It's not, it is a one or two is, uh, is good for us. We do not have any, we'll have the infantry take the lead, uh, but uh, the infantry will take the lead. We have no other pluses except, except we're going to pump in artillery. Artillery is going to come in two, three, four, no problems. Uh, so we do have a plus one on the city column. Any, a, a one will retreat. Anything else will be bad. For somebody. A two. Two is a defender takes a hit, but he maintains his position. So our lead unit was the Canadian Infantry. We have a second cadre. These guys are burned out. They're going to have to leave, but who cares? Because the Allies have their 14 points. Nine Nine for the uh, the drop zones, two for the city hex of Khan. Uh, it's a city beyond the uh, the, the uh, naval gunfire range. Bayo is two, so it's nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And guess what? The city that we took that didn't seem all that important at the time, right there. That one right there is a point. It's beyond. Here is the limits of artillery or of uh, naval bombardment. This is beyond that. It's one point. Brings us up to 14. We don't have to play the Allied turn. They are the winners. Okay. Uh, wow. This, is, this was pretty darn close. Uh, yeah. It, 
the Ger- if I think if the Germans had folded here, then then it would be of course a much easier time because that's a that is a three point item. Okay, uh, they also did not roll up the drop zones. They were too busy holding the line. They did manage to get one, but uh, they were not able to uh, cause significant problem even with the British. All the heavy forces were needed elsewhere, or these guys would have run amok. All this power here, if we didn't have these good German units here to stop them, uh, they would be much farther down the road than they are right now. Uh, and, of course, we had to keep Khan stocked with good units, so there was nothing to do there. Uh, any way you look at it, this was really, really close. If, the, if there was a one-point deficit, clearly the, the Allies would be, would be attacking. Uh, you know, I mean, what we would, we would attack here. There's attack possibilities still here. We would take that again. Again, the, the, the defense is still holding firm, although, let's see. Seven, eight. Yes, it's, it is still two to one proof for as far as basic odds. <coughs> but, uh, you know, you get that lucky die or more to the point that unlucky die in the, in the determined defense. Uh, that stronghold is going to make it a lot harder. I mean, it's going to be a, with, inf- with, a, with artillery and uh, good infantry. Uh, they're they're going to stay. They can't be dislodged. Uh, so, yeah, with, with the strong point, it's only one or two uh, is a chance to kick them out. And we have plus two with artillery and uh, a lead unit being superior infantry with plus one. It's all that matters. It's the plus one. And so they, they are kick-out proof when it comes to uh, determined defense. We would have to get massive odds, and then the, there are results that are so bad that you can't do a determined defense, but n- those, are, those are few and far between. Okay? So anyway, uh, it's an Allied victory, and hard fought at that. They, they still haven't joined up the beachheads, but that would be coming at some point in the Next couple of turns, probably. Uh, and then they need to consolidate a little bit and start pushing this away. Because I have found uh, when you're playing the campaign is that, yes, this is easier going up this way because it's still got, it's got uh, mixed terrain and later on clear terrain. But you really want to cut off the peninsula at some point. The sooner the better. And there's a few reasons for that. It does cause some supply problems, but not as much as you'd think. Uh, uh, Cherbourg is a supply source for units that are over there, and so they're not really going to be too bad off for supply. Uh, that's not going to be the problem. But you're doing two, you're doing a couple things when you when you cut off the peninsula. Uh, you are you are uh, stretching the Germans. So and think about it. If you have a wedge going all the way to the coast, that means the Germans have to have a line going across the peninsula on this side, and they have to do another one over here. So anything that makes their frontage str- uh, bigger, anything that makes them stretch uh, with their limited number of good units is a good thing and will ultimately be your advantage. You just need a hex or two that's squishy and you can make some progress, which actually is kind of what we're seeing here. It's a squishy hex. It's got a, a zero quality, two strength infantry and a shot up 88. Uh, which will be getting some reinforcement soon, but when it's that like like that, it is it is vulnerable. Okay, uh, and of course, when you cut off the peninsula, you prevent any new units from arriving on the other side, and you will eventually wear them down and get over to the uh, Cherbourg Cherbourg uh, uh, harbor. And I do believe that. Uh, they set up this game. They ended it on June 27. I think partly because that I think that is the date that Cherbourg fell. And so really the victory conditions for the full campaign, among other things, is, you know, they assume that you've linked your beachheads by that point. You got to take Cherbourg. You got to take Cherbourg if to have a have a, a competitive chance of winning, I would say. If you blow the Germans out in Khan, OK, maybe maybe you could win there. But uh, realistically, you, not, you, need to, you need to make good progress over at Cherbourg to win the campaign, which is historical. This is what they did in the first three weeks. Uh, all right. Well, I think uh, at this point I'm going to close down. Uh, I want to thank you if you stuck with me this far. Again, this was kind of my gift to you guys because 
I just noticed that I, there were so many people who were watching my Holland 44 video and, you know, it was like the first one I did, uh, the series that I did on that. And I think I do a lot better job now of, uh, of talking to you guys and also to, uh, well, the, I, I've learned a whole bunch about editing. I've got some tools now. I've got, I've got some things that, that actually help me do a better job making these videos for you. Um, so uh, with that, I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of this stuff. I think you get notices when you do that. And it's just nice to see that people follow me and they do appreciate what I do enough to hit the button. Okay, guys, thank you much. Have a very good evening. And uh, this is Paul the Oaken Knight saying that's all for now. Take care. Bye-bye.